Hi, I'm James and this is my take on reality. Now as always, if you guys get anything from the videos, please like, share, and definitely consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps us out as well as leave a take, your take down below. I try to read everything and respond back as best I can. I look forward to seeing what you have to say. To get started, for this particular show and this season of shows for uh, Put A Ring On It, the, these characters, we're going to talk about four things. One, we're going to talk about how Otis uses gaslighting as a tool to manipulate Charlene so that she stays in a relationship. Two, we're going to talk about the lie and how Charlene actually has to believe the lie in order for the lie to work. Three, we're going to talk about her using uh, her situation to be forced to buy into the lie so that she can continue the relationship with Otis. And four, we're going to talk about how Otis uses the idea of counseling and the tactics he learns from counseling as a means and a method to continue his form of gaslighting and control of Charlene in this relationship. All right. Let's get into it. Let's talk about it. First up, put a ring on it. To give an idea of what put a ring on it is about, like I said, it's a show where couples are brought onto the show so they can figure out whether they want to be together. Otis and Charlene have been dating for a little while, and they're at a point now where it's kind of make it or break it. So either we're going to get engaged and get married, or we're going to separate and go our separate ways. Now, you can tell from the characters when they first arrive on the show, they have no intention of breaking up. Charlene is fully invested. She just wants to, she wants Otis to change. So she wants the show to change Otis. She wants counseling to use counseling to change Otis and who he is. She likes how he looks. She likes how he deals with her to, I guess, to a certain degree. She just doesn't like the way he acts and how he treats her. And she's hoping that that gets better. Now, one of the things that I noticed right off rip watching this entire season is that Otis does use gaslighting in order to manipulate Charlene. Just so we all are on the same page. What is gaslighting? Gaslighting is a form of manipulation where you, the manipulator, will try to confuse or distort the person that you're manipulating sense of reality so that they start to second guess what they believe and they start to rely heavily on your positions and what you think and what your opinions are in order for them to actually formulate what they believe. So they themselves don't necessarily have a system or a code of belief. They just merely rely on you for guidance as to what to believe. That's what Otis uses against Charlene the entire season. Now, a few examples of Otis doing this. When Again, when you come on the show, you understand that when you first sign up to the show, you are going to be in a situation where you're going to date other people. That is the show. When Charlene went on her first date, Otis was waiting at home. She comes home with flowers. He takes the flowers that the young man had gave to her, threw them in the trash, and he looked her in the face and said, you need to go take a shower. You're dirty. Go take a shower. Now, off rip, that puts Charlene in a situation where now she feels bad about something, doing something that she was supposed to do. She didn't do anything wrong. When she went on a date, she was completely respectable. It's not like she came home and her clothes was buttons, all the sh buttons on her shirt were ripped off and her pants wasn't fitting right and she, she, her drawers was on backwards. Like, that's not what happened. She came home, she was respectful on a date. She spent most of the day talking about her relationship with Otis. So it was a completely respectable deal. But Otis treated her like she was dirty, like she was filthy, like she was gutter trash. And then he pushed that on her. And you can see from her reaction that it was actually having an effect. She tried to come out and do the whole, I'm a strong woman and I'm powerful and he ain't going to talk to me like that. But you can see in her eyes that she is actually starting to believe everything he was saying. And that's why he was saying it. the second thing that we noticed, like the, the second turnaround. There was a time when the, they were all in a group session and they were having a group counseling session. And the young man said, I'm going to try to get you away from your man. That's my objective. I'm going to try to get you away from your man and make you fall in love with me. Now, when Charlene shared that with Otis and the group, Otis turned around to her and said, oh, he must think that you're a whore. 
because you would never say that to a woman who you respected. So he must look at you like you're trash and you're dirty. And everybody in the room, including Dr. Nicole, picked up on the fact that, no, that's not what he said. That's what you're saying. And when he was confronted with that, in true narcissist fashion, he turned around and said everybody in the room was mistaken, they misheard him, or they were lying on him because that's not what he said and that's not how he meant it. Then that's what you see throughout the entire season. He was doing little things like that. If Charlene came in and... He said something to her about how she was acting. He was always taking a position that he was an authority. So when he said that she did something wrong, she had to fix it because he understood what she was doing wrong. And and he was correcting her and how to make the relationship better and how she could become a better person and a better woman. When she said things, even as innocuous as, hey, I enjoy spending time with you and I want to spend more time with you. He would take it as, oh, so you're trying to say I don't spend time with you? I spend a lot of time with you. Maybe I would spend more time with you if you wasn't such a B-I-T-C-H. Or maybe if you weren't always coming down on me. Or maybe if you weren't always making me feel bad. Or maybe if you were doing this or you were doing that. If you learned to be more of a traditional woman, the thing that I actually want, maybe I would actually spend more time with you. And he would always spin it around to where anything that she said against him especially any criticism or any objective notes of his behavior, it always came back around and somehow it was her fault or it was something that she was doing that made it her fault. And again, that's part of the manipulation, control, and gaslighting that he was participating in. When I talk about the lie and her need to believe the lie for the lie to work, there's no great salesman. There's no great liars. There are only people who really want to buy a certain thing. And so the salesman just gives the person who wants to buy that thing the excuse to buy it. And like, like, same, same. If somebody is telling you a lie, part of you has to want to believe the lie in order for the lie to work. If you don't want to believe the lie, then you won't believe it. No matter how good they are, no matter how earnest they are, whether they cry or not, you just won't believe them. If you tell somebody the truth, if I went to Charlene and said, Charlene, you deserve better because you're a special person, you're a woman, and as a woman, you're a powerful individual, and you should harness that power and appreciate that power and stop wasting your time with somebody who's not worthy of your time. The problem I would have in saying those things to her, even if we take the position that everything I said is true, she would have trouble believing it because she doesn't want to believe it. So therefore, it's not true to her. A person who is so gaslit, they don't know which way is up, which way is down. They're so confused that they don't know the truth when they hear it. They don't know a lie when they hear it. And that's just how the manipulator likes it and wants it. And that's what he's grooming her to do. The third thing, when we talk about the buy-in, later in the... uh series we get to the tell-all we find out that charlene is pregnant now she's about six months pregnant and she'll be doing three months and they're engaged and their life is moving forward and everything now is supposedly wonderful is it wonderful though i, I suggest to you that it's not it's probably the same situation that she was in that brought her to the show the difference is is that understanding where Charlene started from and to where she is and the kind of person she is, it allows somebody like Otis to manipulate the situation to his benefit. For instance, Charlene strikes me as a type of woman who everything has to be in its place. She considers herself to be a pedestal person. She puts herself up on a pedestal. So no matter how bad her situation is, she's always above somebody. And because of that, Charlene found herself in a situation where she doesn't want to be an unmarried mother who has a baby daddy out there. She wants to have a family. So she wants her child to grow up with the father in the household with her. And so when that happens and she gets pregnant, now, all of a sudden, she has to buy in to the relationship. She has to double down on the lies and the gaslighting in order for the relationship to work. If she actually took a step back and she was honest and she was brutally honest with everything that was going on, then their relationship would fail and she would subsequently be left alone with a child, with a man 
who cheated on her. She would also have to take ownership of the responsibility of choosing somebody and choosing to be with somebody, spending her time with somebody, and more importantly, getting pregnant by somebody who isn't worth any of those three things. And that's kind of where the personal responsibility comes in. She doesn't want to face that. So she finds herself in a situation where now she has to buy into whatever bull pocky uh, Otis passes to her. Number four, we get to a point where Otis learned a lot because when you can see the evolution of his manipulation tactics from when the show first started, oh, you need to go in there and take a shower because you filthy dirty. And he would come straight at her and be very insulting and condescending. What he learned through counseling was that the best way for her to, him to manipulate her was to include her. And so he started using terms like instead of saying me, my, I, and things like that, he started using terms like we, we believe for us and things like that. So he started to group everything together, but he used his mind and his mentality as a spear. So she didn't have a voice. So when he talked about our voice, he was talking about his voice. When he talked about uh, we believe he was talking about his beliefs. And that's one of the last things that you see during the tell-all. And actually, it was like maybe the second or third to last episode. He started making that change, and you could see it. Now, where the hit on his side, like I said, she had uh, Charlene had positions where she was going out on dates. So did Otis. Otis had a position where he was going out with a date on, with a young lady by the name of Milan. Now, Milan was a young girl. She was a DJ. And they went on a first date, and after the first date, at some point later, during a group counseling session, for some reason, Otis just springs in that he had DM'd back and forth with Milan off camera and without anybody knowing about it. Charlene, of course, gets upset, and I thought it struck me as kind of weird that this happened. But later on, we find out at the tell-all that not only did he DM Milan, but he was sending her text messages, and eventually he wound up meeting with her without the cameras and without anybody around in a parking lot. And we all know that if you meet somebody in a parking lot, you're probably not going to the parking lot for dinner. Just saying. If you were going for dinner, you would have said we met for dinner, or we were going out for drinks, or we are going horseback riding, or whatever the activity is. She said we met in the parking lot. So, with that being said, we got to see how the culmination of the gaslighting, the, her need to believe the lie, then her buy-in to the lie, and then how the uh, tactics of the counseling took shape and actually put Charlene in a situation where she was actually gaslighting and fooling herself when confronted with the truth. Milan came to the tell-all, and she put it all out there. And like I said, she, she told about the text messages, DMs, the private meetings, the whole nine. One of the things Charlene said was, well, why would you meet him in a parking lot? Why would you meet a man in a parking lot? That's not the question, baby boo. The question is, uh, Otis, why would you meet her in a parking lot? And the question I have for you, Charlene, person who likes to put themselves up on a pedestal and look down on everybody else, why would you be with a man? who would meet somebody in a parking lot when his fiance is at home, the same fiance he just told that she disrespected him by bringing home flowers and going out on a date, an activity that was approved by both of you when you signed up for the show. Why would you tolerate that? But you did. And the craziest part is, as much as Milan sat there and tried to tell Charlene what was going on. Charlene absolutely refused to listen to the truth because she doesn't know what the truth is. She's been gaslit so long, she doesn't know which way is up. And one of the tactics that Otis used the entire time was, well, we already know this. We don't know what she's talking about. We, we've we already talked about this. We've already talked about the uh, DMs. We've already read all the DMs. We don't believe her, Milan, because we're perfect. We're great. And Charlene is sitting there holding his hand, smiling like a crazy person. And the long story short, here's the thing that I would say to anybody in a similar or like situation. Just because you're with somebody and you want that relationship to work, 
That's the buy-in. You want so heavily for the relationship to work that it opens you up to the possibility that they can start gaslighting you, telling you things that aren't true, giving you false realities, and trying to confuse you. Two, they're going to put you in a situation where they're going to start part of that gaslighting. They're going to start lying to you, and they're going to start trying to manipulate you, and you are going to have to start believing that lie in order for the relationship to continue and move forward. And no matter how much... You may want to change that person so you go to therapy or you go to counseling and you want to change them to change their behavior. They have to want to change their behavior in order for any change to actually occur. One, two, what you may be doing is giving a narcissist a tool that they can use against you. Otis isn't a dumb man. He just listened to what he could say and the things and tactics that he could use in order to continue gaslighting uh, Charlene more effectively. And that's what he did. By the time they got to the tell-all, he was a master manipulator. Looked like a master manipulator out there messing around with her. So my advice to people like that, instead of you trying to waste your time changing somebody, find a person that you want the way they are. If you see potential in somebody, fine. Then you don't give them your heart. You don't give them that kind of attention until they're worthy of that time and attention. That's my take. I'm James. I'm out. Cause I've been living life right like I-